Okay, so this video is about coping and defense mechanisms. It's a concept that underlies a lot of what we do in psych nursing. And it explains how human beings adapt to stress. So coping can be either adaptive or maladaptive. And we kind of know that adaptive coping helps a person deal with stress in a healthy way. And at the end of it, the person is stronger. So examples of this could be exercise, meditation, talking to someone, listening to music, creating art, anything that helps that person cope with stressors and does not weaken, but rather strengthens the individual. Um, maladaptive coping, on the other hand, relieves stress temporarily, but they also cause harm. They weaken the individual over time and leave them more susceptible to stressors, not um, stronger. So examples could be somebody who is always worrying about things that they can't do anything about. Worrying is very unproductive and leads to uh, secretion of cortisol and adrenaline. Using any kind of substance to relieve stress temporarily um, in the absence of developing coping skills, binge eating, smoking, um, those are all maladaptive behaviors. And then we have defense mechanisms. These are sort of a little more elaborate. You probably already know the concept from your basic psych courses um, of Freud's ego, superego, and id. The id's like the little kid who just wants pleasure all the time and to avoid pain um, or punishment. Super ego's like the parent who, you know, little goody two shoes, always do the right thing, always be perfect. It's sort of like the conscience or moral code. Um, and then the ego moderates between the two. This is the part of your psyche that finds the compromise. You maximize your pleasure and avoid pain, but you also have a sense of reality. You compromise. There are things that, that give you pleasure that are unacceptable to do. Um, so it's the part of the psyche that sort of negotiates that stress response between the id and the superego. Um, defense mechanisms are an extension of that id, ego, super ego paradigm. And they're coping techniques that are used in the wake of any threatening situation. And the threat could be to your self-esteem, the threat could be to your social standing, but anything that threatens the equilibrium, just like the body, the brain is gonna try and get to homeostasis. So we're gonna go into the defense mechanisms. And it's important to remember people will vary. Um, some of these defense mechanisms lead to adaptive coping, some lead to maladaptive, they are not wrong in themselves. In psychotic disorders, we see them taken to extreme degrees, but everyone uses them, healthy or sick, all of the time, um, because we're always negotiating um, the balance between what we want, what we should do, what we can have. Um, we use defense mechanisms every day in our real lives. So compensation, um, your book has a table of these, I believe it's on page 19. Um, covering up a real or perceived weakness by emphasizing a trait one considers more desirable. So an example of this is a high school student struggles with math, but he becomes the star athlete. He's good at football. So he's covering up for the fact that he's academically weaker by making sure that he develops another area. Um, denial, refusing to acknowledge the existence of a real situation or the feelings associated with it. So we see this a lot in substance use disorder. We see it in family members who can't cope with their loved one's mental health issue. Um, we see it in a normal part of the grief response, but uh, refusing to acknowledge a man loses his job because of daily drinking, but states he does not have an alcohol problem. That's denial. Displacement. The transfer of feelings from one target to another that is considered less threatening or that is neutral. So if you were to um, express your feelings to the real target of your frustrations, there could be a danger that there is a negative consequence. So you pick somebody who's not going to fight back or something. So an example of this is a child is angry at his mother for taking away his toy. But instead of expressing his anger at mom, because she's got all the power, she can put him in a timeout, um, he kicks the dog instead because the dog's not going to do anything to him. That's displacement. And we have identification. Um, an attempt to increase self-worth by acquiring the attributes and characteristics of an individual one admires. An example of this, you know, you have somebody who's in high school and they really admire a famous actress um, or celebrity. So they copy the hairstyle and the mannerisms um, to be more like that person. Now we see this go to extremes in psychosis where somebody will actually claim to be the person or be related to the person. Um, 
we all do identify with individuals that we admire and we will sometimes take on characteristics of them, um, but be aware that this is something that can be carried to an extreme. Intellectualization, an attempt to avoid expressing actual emotions associated with a stressful situation by using the intellectual processes of logic, reasoning, and analysis. It's like a sour grapes mentality. So a man's dog dies, and instead of verbalizing grief, crying over the dog, being sad, he reasons that he gave the dog a good life for 12 years and that the dog isn't suffering anymore. That's intellectualizing. So you're experiencing it in your head and not in your heart. Um, introjection, <laughs> integrating the beliefs and values of another individual into one's own ego structure. And this is similar, but a little deeper than identification. When we interject, we actually put their attributes into our character. Um, so we're not just copying superficial things. And an example of this is a new nurse who adopts the attitudes of a nurse that she respects. Um, if she's mentoring with a nurse who is well-respected on the unit um, and she's considered to be very competent and that nurse has attitudes towards patients with substance use, the new nurse will adopt those attitudes. Isolation, separating a thought or a memory from the feeling tone or associated, emotion associated with it. So this is where you get people with horrible stories of trauma who act like when they recount those events, they act like they're telling you about um, everyday things. And they don't actually experience the emotion when they recall that memory. So my example here is a client with a history of intimate partner violence tells a therapist that she remembers a relationship as if it happened to someone else, like she's watching it in a movie. Projection when you don't want to own your own stuff and you throw it onto someone else. An example of this, a man is cheating on his wife and accuses her of having an affair. Um, projection is really common in interpersonal relationships. It's one of the things you might work on when you work in families or couples. Um, rationalization is an attempt to make excuses or formulate logical reasons to justify your unacceptable feelings or behaviors. I do this when I eat the broken cookies. I reason that the broken ones don't have calories. Well, that's not true, but it makes me feel better. Um, another example, an employee calls out sick from work, goes to the beach and calls it taking a mental health day. So they make some kind of rational excuse um, that justifies their behavior. Reaction formation um, is when you prevent an unacceptable or undesirable thought from being expressed um, by exaggerating opposite thoughts or types of behaviors. So a wife is unhappy in her marriage um, and she doesn't really particularly like her husband, but she dotes on him all the time, makes her favorite food, makes his favorite foods um, and declares her love for him madly on social media. You know, everything is about her perfect marriage. It's unacceptable to that wife to own that she is um, unhappy in her marriage so she does the exact opposite. You see this a lot, um, people who are attracted to one individual, but they don't want the person to know. Maybe that other person is married or otherwise out of reach. So they pretend not to like them at all. Regression, retreating in response to stress at an earlier level of development and the comfort measures associated with that level of functioning. And we see this a lot in pediatrics because people move through those developmental stages rapidly. So when they're stressed, a three-year-old um, is stressed by the birth of a sibling, refuses to use the potty. He goes back to that earlier stage of development where he had diapers and mommy had to change them. And he asks to drink from a bottle um, because that earlier stage of development was easier and more comfortable. And you see that a lot with folks who have schizophrenia, um, the disorganized type, they will sort of regress to childlike behaviors as well. Repression involuntarily blocking unpleasant feelings and experiences from one's awareness. So this is something that your mind does to protect itself without your rational um, consciousness being involved at all. So an example is a rape victim can't remember any of the events associated with a traumatic event for her is, is it's, it's as if it never happened. She cannot recall that memory, even though she knows possibly on an, an intellectual level that it happened she cannot remember any of the details. That is repression. 
not to be confused with suppression, which is the voluntary blocking of unpleasant feelings and experience. So you are well aware on a conscious level that there's an unpleasant feeling or experience and you choose not to engage with it. Um, so students unprepared for an exam, but he refuses to think about it. Um, maybe person with financial difficulties sees a water bill come in and doesn't open it because they don't want to think about their financial stress. That's suppression. Sublimation is different. It is a rechanneling of drives or impulses that are personally or socially unacceptable into activities that are constructive. An example of this is when you have somebody who is a recovering addict, has a craving for drugs or alcohol, and instead of engaging in that behavior because it's unacceptable, the person goes to the gym and engages in exercise. Um, that is an example of sublimation. Sublimation can lead to a lot of adapting, adaptive coping strategies. Um, undoing. Undoing is when you cancel out an experience that you found intolerable. Usually it's a behavior that you've engaged in and you know that it's not a, a nice thing to do. And so you do something to fix it. Um, so the behavior's already happened and now you have to cancel it out. A parent yells at a child and then buys the child a new video game out of feelings of guilt. And that is our defense mechanisms video. There are two questions on the exam. One about this, there will be at least one on the final. Thank you.